church. God is serious. God is serious about your spiritual life. Amen. Are you investing in heaven? Do you know? Do you know if you will have a place in heaven? How sure are you? Have a moment to speak with God. Amen. Because God, our Father, wants nothing more than to see you there, to join Him, to be with Him. Amen. And I also want to see each and every one of you one day there celebrating our Lord. Amen. Come on. Let's give Him the highest glory. Worship from our heart right now. Hallelujah. For as great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise right now. No one else. Let there be no rival. Let there be no rival in your hearts right now. Let go and let God in. Amen. Come on. Worship Him. Worship Him. Yes,
and say, Lord, we want to lift your name. children, oh Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone. For you
awesome you people of Lord. We could sing, we could sing, we could dance, Lord. you together oh lord hallelujah father we pray that you touch each and every one of your people in this place touch their hearts oh lord open their ears lord god so they can reach more to you oh lord hallelujah 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 yes father we we um, we lift up to you lord god your messenger today oh lord hide them behind your cross oh lord god so they may speak nothing but the truth oh lord god prepare each and every one of your people for what is about to happen today oh lord god because i know that your holy spirit is anointing each and every one of your people today oh lord hallelujah hallelujah father we pray lord god that our praise and worship to you oh lord god today is a sweet aroma to you oh lord hallelujah once again, Father, we bring you back all the praise, all the glory, and all of your sons and daughters say, Amen. amen. tell them hi neighbor hi, it neighbor. is so good to see you today to see welcome you today. to our church amen good afternoon church yes you may be seated hello how are you doing it's a beautiful day we have had a cold day today um, and we're so blessed that you've made it here. Um, thank you, Sister Jeanette. Okay, so um, first we have our new segment. So in the life of our church, we have so many things that we would love to update you on. Um, and if you want to take any notes, uh, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, but. Let's go down in the order for this month because we have a lot coming up in the month of March, April. Um, so please stay tuned. Okay, so first, we have the 21 days Daniel prayer and fasting and actually has started today. Um, so <laughs> we wish you all the best to all of those that are participating in this wonderful prayer and fasting. Um, and if you don't know, there are rules and regulations as well that come with doing the 21 Daniel prayer and fasting, which we have a whole heap of um, information provided on our Facebook page. So yeah, March 3rd to the 23rd, which would be a really good way to fast and prepare for our Holy Week. Um, so yes, next we have our state immersion. So our church will be having our immersion this coming Saturday. So on March 9th, we will be having our state immersion. Um, so please, to all of the workers and to all of the leaders, um, please be prepared to join us for March 9, which we will um, be posting as well the, um, the address and everything to you by today, okay? So next, we have a wonderful testimonial video that I hope you can prepare and pay attention. So let's just look to the screen. Hi everyone, I'm Sister Joy from JIL Melbourne. I'm a part of Worship Arts Net and I'm grateful to God for using me in this ministry. 
And on behalf of JL Melbourne One, um, I would like to give all the glory and honor to our living God for how he moves and how he works in this ministry, despite of the challenges we face in not having our own place of worship yet. The place where we are currently worshiping is also um, quite challenging as they are very strict with the time we have to enter and finish. So we're like a well-oiled machine, um, unloading all the instruments and media stuff from the van before our allotted time. So when it's time to enter, we can swiftly bring everything inside. And within 30 minutes, we set up everything, instruments, media, chairs, do sound checks and video checks. It's a race against the clock. So despite these challenges, our passion and faith in serving the Lord continue to grow. It's like an inspiration to us and to those who witness it. We're not letting the situation hinder us from worshiping the Lord. It actually molds us as a Christians. These challenges have not stopped us from serving the Lord. In fact, God has shown His faithfulness by bringing more people to serve in the ministry. He continues to demonstrate His goodness and faithfulness not only in the ministry, but also in our personal lives. And we have witnessed countless of miracles and answered prayers within our church, healing, salvation, reunited families, new jobs and promotions, granted visas and successful visa applications, and so much more. And um, truly indeed, our God isn't limited by our circumstances, that's for sure. He continues to manifest His power and grace in our lives. So the JL Melbourne Worship Arts Net will always sing as long as I'm breathing. Okay, so thank you. Can we just give a round of applause for all of our workers, our ministry leaders, and um, most importantly, thank you, Atta Joy, for that testimonial video. We're so blessed that you're a part of our church. And to all of the other ministry leaders, workers, um, and servers, we just want to thank you on behalf of JIL Melbourne for making our Sundays happen. And okay, so after that, we have another announcement that we would like to show you. So let's look towards Hi, the screen. Hi, we are your young adult leaders. I'm Jay. And I'm Hazel. We would like to invite you to our young adults hang this coming 16th of March at Jess and Damien's place. And we are going to have a fellowship, going to uh, enjoy food and have the word as well. So we can't wait uh, to have you. See you on the 16th of March. See, See you there. there. Yes, okay. So, to all of the young adults, we are really having our Yan, 16th of March, 3 p.m. So, it's going to be towards lunchtime, uh, late lunch at Jess and Damien's place. We invite you to attend to come over. Um, they just recently moved as well. So, this is like a wonderful housewarming for them as well. So, if you are keen and interested, like in that video, you have our lovely sister Hazel and Tito Jay, um, who would also just like to introduce themselves, you know, just so you know who your leaders are, to talk more about it. Yes, uh, praise God. Let's give the best clap of praise to our God. Hallelujah. Can I see the hands of the young adults here? Yes. Yes, can I ask you to stand up, please? Yes, be proud of the young adults one. Come on. Come on. Stand up for the young adults. So, young adults po is from uh, 24 to 35 years old. Sige po, you can sit down na. Thank you to the three who stand up. They're very shy. But yeah, uh, um, so we give the glory to God for this uh, young adults ministry. It, it has been a while, but I know the, the ministry has grown so much. And we are like uh, reaching... 20 to 30 already, no? When we gather around. So, I invite all of you, uh, for all the young adults, even for the new ones, to come join us this March. And for every month, we have activities that we will plan uh, to, you know, to 
to have fellowship with all the young adults and give glory to our God. So this is my husband, Jay. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. To God be the glory po for the life of our youngs. Amen. It's, uh, it's growing and uh, continually growing for God's grace. Ano po? And uh, yun nga po, as uh, Sister Hazel has said, we're inviting you to uh, uh, Damien's house. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we all gathered here, all the youngs of JL Melbourne. Ano po? And uh, we thank you for it's the life of every youngs here. Uh, to God be the glory. Po. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hazel and Sister Jay for that. Okay, moving on. I'll be really quick with this. So for March 17th, we'll be having a new location. We will not be here as they are closed for just this specific date. So March 17th, please mark it in your calendar that we'll be at a new location. Um, it's not too far from here either. It's still located in the west. It'll be in Airport West at Bowes Avenue Community Hall. And we'll have our regular time as well, 3 p.m. So yes, we'll post this of course um, more information for you uh, but yes it's at a new location just for this date only okay and as well we have our Easter coming up our Holy Week we're already in the month of March so we only have around like four weeks left uh, for our Easter and our Holy Week so the 29th and the 31st of March please book it in your calendars that the church will be having our Holy Week events um, and we'll you know show more details towards that but this is such an important you know event to have um, so we want you to be there yes Okay, and okay, next we have the Hearts Night on the 27th of April. This one is a fun one where we can dress up. There will be a theme, dress accordingly to it, but invite your loved ones, your friends to join us for our Hearts Night. There'll be food, games, drinks. There will be a whole itinerary for our Hearts Night. We always have one every single year, different theme. So that will be really fun on the 27th of April. More details to come on that. Lastly, we have our early bird discount. So can we just thank the Lord for the grace for, you know, providing an early bird discount. And it has been extended as well. So um, it will be extended up to the 31st of March. So a whole new month for our early bird pricing that has been extended. Of course, um, if you wanna get into it, rush into it. Um, we have all the pricings that will be shown behind me. QR code is behind me as well. Don't forget we have posted this on our social media platforms. So if you miss out on, you know, uh, scanning this, we have it all on our platform pages. Okay, so that is all from me. I hope you digested everything that was said. We have a lot coming up in the life of our church. And of course, we have a lot coming up right now because we have our most beloved Brother Rico for our Titan offering. Can we just give him a clap? Praise God. Palakpakan po natin ng Diyos. Hallelujah. I was assigned by our uh, financial uh, finance uh, manager, I would say, to share the Titan offering. It's been a long time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, how many of us believe that we are steward of what God's given to us? I think we need to understand that. I think that's the most precious foundation for us really to understand that all the things that we have, it comes from Him. Can you please tell your neighbor that you and I are stewards? You know, God is so gracious and good because He gave you a lot of things. Most especially the time, the ability and talents. And lastly, I know and I believe sometimes probably you might say, why are we talking about money in the church? But to tell you honestly, even our Lord Jesus Christ didn't, didn't really excuse Himself to talk about money because there's something about money. There's power in money. You can do everything in money. You can use it in everything. But the thing is, I think the reason why Jesus Christ is very specific on talking about money is because He doesn't want us to be corrupted when we have that kind of blessings to our God. 
So we are stewards. We have the time. We have the, the talent and the money. But we are talking about here the money. So um, most of you are, are Christians for a long, long time now. And most of the people are standing here always telling you the meaning of tithing. What's the meaning of tithing? What is, what is tithing? Anyone? What is tithing? We should know that. For Christians, we should know tithing. We, we should know giving too, offering, and even pledges. So to cut the story short, as we know, being a steward of God, it won't be for us Christians, it won't be very, very hard for us to give because of the thinking that we are only stewards of all the things that God's given us. The hard thing for Christian is when he or she tell to, to, her, to himself or herself that all the things that I have is mine. That is a very, very dangerous foundation that we can, we, can, we can really live in. But of us, I believe all of us, all of us is a, is a good steward of what God given us, right? You know, and, and you, will, you will ask me, Brother Rico, words, words in the Bible that um, God is asking us to tithe. Well, I've just um, have that manual of uh, Christian stewardship. Thank God for JL uh, worldwide. Even in um, in uh, in Old Testament, and even in and in even the law is not giving yet. Tithing is there already. Remember um, Abraham meeting Melchizedek. You know, um, he gave the tenth. He said because Melchizedek, as a high priest, bless him. Remember Jacob when he's playing to um, to his brother Esau, and then um, um, he was new in the land. And then he promised God, whatever you get to give me, I will give you the tent. And then I am hearing a lot of things about um, the tithing is not, is not mentioned in the New Testament. But that, that was wrong too. You know, uh, in, 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 in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is very specific on tithing too. But he, he elevated that one with, with, a, with, a giving, with a giving heart. With a giving heart. Remember when he told the Pharisees that you are giving your tithes, but you are giving it with, with, uh, with people around you? Remember that? He, he's not condemning the tithing. He's condemning the heart of the people giving. And then even, um, even um, Paul is telling us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that if we are a giver, we should be a cheerful giver. Not, being, um, uh, not giving because you are being forced to, on being um, compulsive. So, at the end of the day, I would just like to encourage you that giving is part of our Christian life. You know, I hope that um, in our relationship with God, that is our prayer all the time, that um, Lord, um, help me. Help me to understand, first and foremost, that I am a steward of all the things that you've given to me. Even your life, even the life, that, uh, the life that you have right now, the life that you are being here today, that is given to you. And if you know, if, 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 if you are um, very um, particular on time, you know, um, without life, you know, you can't work. Isn't it? Is it logic? Isn't it? When God didn't give you another day of life, aren't you going to work tomorrow? Now, I just want to encourage you. This is a part of our belief that Jesus is Lord Church worldwide is standing on tight chain offering. You know, and we just need to put on our hearts and our minds, acknowledge that all of these things that you have is from God. And I will tell you now, it's, it's, never, be, it's never been hard to, be, to give. When, when you have that kind of foundation in your heart, that all things comes from Him alone. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for this um, truth that you've given us today, that we are stewards of all the things that you've given to us. That's including our time, that's including our talent, and most especially, 
including all the financial things that you've given to us. Father, I pray, this is our prayer, that uh, you open our hearts all the time to be thankful first and foremost to you for all the things you have you've done to our lives because um, you are so good and faithful. You never, never forsake us. All the things that we have right now is a blessing comes from you. And I pray that you teach us every day in our lives to be a cheerful giver. And I pray that um, you teach us to tithe and even to give an offering to, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I know and I believe that you will use this offerings and these sites for the expansion of your kingdom alone and continue to bless my brothers and sisters today and tomorrow and to their lives too, oh God, including their family. Once again, we give you all back the glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can you give God a clap offering to God? Hallelujah. All right. I think without further ado, are we ready to read the word of God today? Amen. And all right. Let's welcome our senior pastor, Pastor Bong Puyat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How's everyone? Still giving? Yes, yes. Thank you, Brother Rico. Wow. Praise God. Before we begin, we'll, we'll just welcome to church this afternoon. Beautiful people of God. Hallelujah. Uh, Carl Roy Vincent. Can we see you? Hi, Carl. Hello, Carl. Praise God. Also, uh, Shy Cell. Yeah, we, we know Shy, Shy Cell, right? Okay, welcome. Welcome back. Also, Jerick Anthony Cruz. Hello, Jerick. Wow. God is good. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord? He is bringing people to the work of God. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, 21 Yardley Street, Maidstone, Maidstone Community Center. Even the man's coming from the back is a new face to me. Melinda Meta. Is Melinda Meta? Hello, Melinda. Hello. Brennan Meta. Brennan. Did I say it right? Brennan. He is a boy? Yes, young boy. Yes. Brennan with double N. Not <laughs> to tell. <laughs> to tell my wife. <laughs> Guys, man, you need to have correction from time to time, right? Yeah? All the all the men in the house say yes. Yeah. Yes, alright. Happy life is a happy. Yeah. You guys are good. You guys are good, man. You guys are good. All right. Praise God. Let's all pause and pray to, together. Lord, we thank you. All heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Holy Spirit, you are our most special guest in this house. There's nothing hidden to you. You see how your people comes in here every Sunday. And even the language that we heard, um, you're teaching us to wait for that place of worship. And thank you for teaching us that, oh God. That's the most special lessons that we learn in our Christian walk. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount on wings as eagles. They shall run but not grow weary. They shall walk but not faint. I pray today, O oh God, that your people, including me, as we walk with you, Lord, we are people of obedience. We are people of faithfulness. We are people of the things that we see in front of us, the values that we have, this passionate love for you, intimately in love with you. No rival, no second thing, just you. And this alone has a ripple effect in our lives, through our lives, that we love people whoever they are, this passionate, compassionate love for people. 
and we remain faithful. We remain people of integrity. You see us outside of our doors. You see, our, you see us inside of our rooms. We are people of character. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray even that we are people of faithfulness and we are people of excellence. Everything you place upon our hands, hallelujah. Lord, we will give our best. Yes, Lord. Not just doing church work, but most of all outside, Lord. Outside of this, this four corners of this building because people are watching us and we are your example to them. We are your example to them. We are the example of our action, words, and deeds. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for this house. Bless this house continuously. Anoint this house. Anoint every lives in this place. In Jesus' name. And thank you for your word. Thank you for your reminder today. In your name we pray. And God's children say... Amen. Amen. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord? Praise God. Praise God. And also a big clap to all those people that serves at church. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah to our leaders, to our workers, to our CMT, and to all the members of the church. Uh, as Sister Vicky says, today is the day of our um, Daniel days and fasting so um, if you need more information just please see us see sister Anne or even your life group leaders hallelujah about the, the Daniel day fast uh, I have to I have to change those words that have been spoken today it's not rules nor regulation it's not I mean for for just a, a brief words regarding the Daniel fast the church goes through a Daniel fast for 15 days that somehow that you, to cut the, the word short, I mean, the time that you, you know, you will pause for a while and say to God, God, for 15 days, no social media. God, for 15 days, no chocolates. God, for 15 days, no this and this. It's just this kind of meal right the vegetables and and um, and all your uh, fruit juice right and you say to the lord i, I want to spend more time with you i mean if you're interested there are prayer uh, uh points to pray for these 15 days so please see, see pastor Anne. 21 days sorry thank you thank you 21 days and then it's posted on our WIN messenger. How many of you, can I just ask you, how many of you attends our WIN ministry? Warriors Intercessors Network. Wow. <laughs> Four people from the church. Wow. How many of you, just look to the person next to you and say, my neighbor, do you believe the power of prayer? This language that we use every Sunday, I, I mean, a, a person with no prayer life is a happy meal for Satan. How many of you believe that with all your heart? I mean, you can't navigate this life in your Christian walk, the so-called Christian walk without prayer life. And somehow there's a, a, a vehicle that the church, through the life of uh, the JIL world, worldwide, that teaches you and I to participate to commit. I mean, thank God for Zoom. Somehow, you and I know for a fact, even, even if it's Zoom in the comfort of your home, man, God, it's too difficult. It's too difficult. That's why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Right? Last Sunday, we talked about some of us, we just love the good Sunday, right? But we don't, you don't appreciate and go with the hard yards of a Good Friday. He has to go to, to Gethsemane to pray before the cross. Praise God. So I encourage everyone. Say to the one next to you, my neighbor, join the wind ministry. Yes? 
Are you still there? So, welcome to church, Carl, Seychelles, Jerick, Melinda, and Brennan. And I pray to the Lord that it will not be your first Sunday today. May many more Sundays to come. And my prayer for you guys, really, I, I do not know your background. If you have received the Lord as your personal Savior, but my prayer for you and I, who are here, even sp especially the, the newcomers today, that you will love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And then you give to the work of God. And then say to the one next to you, and then some more. And then you serve. Say to the one next to you, come on. And then you serve. And then you serve. Pastor Anion, and then you serve. Wow. The day is not enough for me to say all those things, the capacity of a man and a woman to serve God. And that, that, that will be my topic today. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Praise God. One, say yes. Are you ready for the word? The marks, the mark, the mark, the mark. Are you living a mark? Psalms 133, verse 1 to 3, this says there, uh, as I, as I paraphrase it, it says, uh, the anointing of God, when God's people are together, but the anointing of God that flows in the, the life of Aaron, the priest, priest, I'm looking at priests today, priest, and then flows that anointing of oil. Oil is the representation of God, the presence of God. God is good, and it will just flow in his beard, in his robe, and in his sandals. And I see a man and a woman when he or she is anointed, not alone, just godly. He is anointed wherever he goes. That flow of anointing oil. will be everywhere and people will see, wow. That's why somehow last Sunday I just showed you an illustration and, 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 and then people will come up to you, right? There's something different in you and they will say, Man, there's something different with you. Something different with you. We go with the same storm. We go with the same paying the mortgage. We go with this, all these challenges in life. But there's something in you. Just the way you talk, the way you behave, your attitude. Has everyone says that to you? Well, at work, there's a difference in you. Because the Word of God says you are set apart. You are the light. You are the light. Oh, pastor, that's a lot of responsibility. I, I, I am the light. I, I hope I can just be a Christian on Sunday, but I can be different on Monday to Friday. And I hope you're not that. Was that kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde? There's a mask for Sunday, and then you put on a different mask on Monday to Saturday. That's why language that we use at church I says, man, I mean, you don't, look, you don't have to go far. I mean, check the person next to you. Ask your wife. Ask your kids. Right? Would that be good? Is that, is that a good talk today? Right? You don't have to go far. You don't, go ask Pastor Wong and see what's your behavior like. No. Your wife sees you every day. Your wife sees the way you talk, the way you behave towards her. And they will say, man, is, is this guy godly or what? <laughs> I hope you got me today. Are you still here, church? The mark of a faithful Christian. The text for today is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it's, it begins like this. Let a man or a woman so consider us. A servant of Christ, you have to underline that word, and a steward of the mysteries of God. Thank God, God is changing you and I every day, every minute, every second. And I hope you can say yes. While you're hanging the clothes, somehow you had a reflection and go, oh man, why did I say that to my child? That's, that's an ungodly call. And you know for a fact, you and I, it's the Holy Spirit talking to you. And at the end of the day, you and I has the call of what? Obeying or you don't give nothing. I couldn't care less.
Moreover, is a required in steward not know that one be found faithful. Underline that word, faithful. Each of us takes on a different role in our lives, right? I mean, um, uh, um, the man that wrote Five Languages of Love, I forgot the name, but you know the book. Different language. We all wear different hats. I mean, if you ask me, I mean, the hat that I wear for myself, I wrote something like this. In relationship, I'm a husband, a father, a son, an uncle, a cousin, a brother, a nephew, and a friend. On occupation, I am a pastor. On vocation, I am a religious minister. But when it comes to hobby, I'm a part-time gardener. When it comes to work around the house, I'm the gardener, the groundskeeper. I take the rubbish. I drive people everywhere. <laughs> How many of you do that? Et cetera, et cetera. We all take different roles, right? Are you still here? Paul is talking about two things. He says, you are a servant of Christ. And you are a steward of the mysteries of God. Two things. Let's just dive on that. The word servant, the original word for servant is the underclass seaman. I mean, if there's a big boat in those early days, because Paul saw this, the boat is so big, those people under the boat are the one that's rowing. And they're commanded by the captain on top. So whatever the captain says to them, row, stop, go, They'll follow. Those are the servants. And it says, steward of the mysteries of God. Stewardship. We just heard the word steward. Can you say this with me? Steward. You were given the stewardship of ability, talent. You're a dad. Hallelujah. For a fact, you're a mother today. Wow, that's a big call. Man, the question that I'll challenge everybody, how are you navigating your home for God. That will, be, that will be a good word to ponder, huh? Man, not just 2024, for the rest of your life here on planet Earth. How are you navigating? That's why you and I, we were given papers and pen to write down, God, this is my goal. And then before you ask, you put the what, you put the why. Why are you working? Why do you have all these resources? Why do you have the car? Why do you have the new car? Why do you have the new house? Oh, man, just a splurge. Oh, wow, beautiful house. But some of you answer those things, right? Lord, thank you for the house. Now I can use that for the Lord. A perspective happens. You're a steward. Any steward in the house? And then we heard today you are a cheerful steward. Nobody pushes you. It's not an obligation. I tell those people who serve at church, even myself, if you're serving a church and then you feel like obligated, man, don't. Don't attempt. Please don't attempt. Because it's going to be commitment. You're gonna, it's going to be hard. You're going to put all your money there, resources, gifts, and talent. And then God, in a way, is going to groom you. It's going to be hard. The steward in here means the original word is a house manager. It's the person who's in charge when the owner is away. God is in charge. He's the boss. He's away. And then he's watching you and me. And one day, one day, nobody escapes. One day, and it's called the judgment day seat of Christ. One day, you and I will, will give what? Come on, Christians, come on. You've read this. You and I will give what? An account. Accounting. You and I, you will never miss this. It's not about title nor, nor roles in the church, you and I. One by one. Not so called like... Can I just call Hillsong? Can I just call Planet Shakers? Can I just call JIL? No, no, no. Geraldine Carpio first. One by one. One by one. You've read this. A anybody? Yes? No? You've read this, right? 
You know that. You're particular, you're particular of this. Moreover, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. That's why I want you to underline that word faithful. The mark of a faithful servant, stewards of Christ. What is the first mark? Right? The first mark of faithfulness is accountability. Man, you're going to take an account. I need to take an account. I'm not going to go to him on that day and say, oh, pass. <laughs> pass. Pino Henio, pass. No. You're going to give an account. You and I, we're going to give an account. That's why if you're navigating your Christian life, your so-called intimate love with God here on earth, and you're wasting time. Last Sunday, what, what did I say? If it's not for God, Apostle Paul says what? Did Paul Paul As soon as I found out God, all those rubbish... We hear this to our spiritual director all the time, right? The Tagalog word, basura. Everything I need to delete. It's not from God. Come on, you're reflecting today. It's not from God. I'm not. Man, I'm going to grow with the Lord with this one. This one, oh no, no, this is rubbish. Waste of time, waste of energy. Oh, wrong crowd, wrong people, wrong words. Man, I'm like a trash can when there's people around me start talking. Delete, delete, delete. And you have the responsibility. I have the responsibility. You don't pass it on to the next door neighbor. You don't pass it on to your four-year-old son and says, Oh, can you take responsibility for mom and dad? It's your call. Are you here, Christians? Accountability. All of us Christians are going to be held accountable. The Word of God says, Romans chapter 14, verse 11. You're familiar with this. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Every tongue shall confess to God. The role of yourselves and my, my one, the role of the church, is to share the gospel. If they come to the Lord, it's God's making. But that's your role and that's my role. Because God is the creator and the master of the universe. And as I said a while ago, there will be a judgment time. Go with me in Matthew chapter 25. There are three parables. I love these three parables. And it says something like this. The mysteries of God. And it begins something like this. Heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. That's why last Sunday we said, oh, eternal is not when you die alone, salvation and eternity already is when you met the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. Because in your heart, you will see eternity. And God will place something in your heart. You will have a holy conviction. You will have a Holy Spirit discontent. It will move everything for God. Pastor, what's that? Your work, your plan, even your vacation, even your dreams. God will say, oh man, forget about the dream. Ungodly. Use this one. How many of you go through that? How many of you go through that? You go home before you sleep, you reflect. Or you just go, kumbaya. Whatever happens, happens. Oh man. Miss, hit and miss. He goes, he is the master of the universe. He will have a judgment day, judgment time, individually. And then he starts talking about these three things, three parables in Matthew 25, about the talent, about the goat and the sheep, and then about the ten virgins. He says, on Matthew 25, regarding accountability, God says, he puts the sheep on one side and the goats on the other. Then he talks to each group saying, to those on his left, you did not give me a drink. You did not visit me. You did not give me clothing. I'm paraphrasing this. They will say, but we did not see you. Guess what? No excuses. You are accountable for what you did 
not do. It's amazing sometimes God presents himself in front of us. And you and I, we know for a fact, we need to be sensitive. He will say to those on his right, Matthew chapter 25, you cloth me, you feed me, you visited me, you took care of me. They will say, but we did not see you. Guess what? No excuse. You are accountable for what you did do. Everything we do or don't do, we are accountable for. Is there a yes there? Amen? Are you here, church? Accountable. Accountable. Accountability. Accounting. The second one is preparedness. The mark of your faithfulness is how you prepare. That's why I use words such as to the father and the mother of the house has family. And you always say in your home, this is a godly house. How are you navigating your home? It's March now. How is your five-year plan? I mean, would that be a good talk, a coffee talk between husband and wife? I mean, yourself in the house, navigating. Oh, man, I want this house to be godly, marriage to be godly. And then the husband say, what are we going to do? The wife say, pass. Because people who are faithful in the Lord, they're always prepared. Can I hear yes to that? They're prepared. They're prepared. It's not a mini, mini, mo kind of thing. They're prepared. Are you here, church? Matthew 25, the ten virgins. If you remember, five were wise and five were called foolish. Other translation, silly and wise. Because of all had brought lambs and were waiting for the bridegroom to come. God is going to come. God is going to come like a thief in the night. And then God says to you in application, what? Be challenged. Do the work of God. Bring the gospel in your marriage. Bring the gospel in the family. Occupy. Occupy till I come. There's no such thing as mini mining. Oh, man, God, we still got time, man. So good in Melbourne, God. Whoa, whoa. I have to finish this, this, and this, and this. God sees all that. God sees all that. Are you here, church? Ladies and gentlemen, God sees all your that. But I'm just checking every, every heart today. God is checking every heart today. Is God still in the picture? How is your preparation? They're waiting for the bridegroom to come. But only five of them brought extra oil lamp. A night war on the bridegroom was delayed. And the five who did not prepare ran out of oil. Other translation says, God is going to be delayed. He will come. Can you imagine posting it in front of us? We'll be in a hurry, right? Right? It's going to come. It's going to come. Kind of like when you have a guest. And you know what time they're going to come. Man, hours before that, you, what, what do you do? Do you just lie down in the house and say, when they come, they come. Man, you're cleaning up. You're preparing a, a good meal. You're make, making sure you vacuum the seats and, you know, presenting the house. Because your guest is coming. They had to go and buy some more oil. And while they're gone, the bridegroom came. The parable says that those who were prepared were invited into the wedding. And the door was shut behind them. The five who had gone out to buy more oil came back and found the door closed. And they said, Lord, Lord. Matthew chapter 25, verse 11 to 12. Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and says, assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I gave you time to prepare. And until now, man, kumbaya, kind of walk with God. Man, until now, wow, wow. You, you're, you're like a, a diesel engine kind of Christian. You have to be wind up, man. And then you move going to church because of emotions. People pushing you this and this. But oh, can you imagine in marriage and it's all about emotion? Because marriage is all about commitment, right? What's that, what's, what's that kind of talk, Pastor Bong? 
I mean, if you ask me, do I, do, does my wife likes me every day? Of course not. Does I like her every day? Of course not. But I'm committed to love her every day. It's not based on emotion. Because sometimes you wake up in the morning and go, what? Is this my husband? Emotion dictates, oh, I don't like it anymore. Change na. But you're committed. Right? Committed. Are you there? Are you still here? And you're prepared. Because you're going to give an account. Some of you sit here, sit here today and says, oh, when it comes, it comes. But that's the role of sharing the gospel, right? It's a reminder to you and I. Are you still here, church? A young man applied for a job. As a farmhand. And when the farmer asked for his qualification, he said, listen to this word, I can sleep when the wind blows. This puzzled the farmer. But he liked the young man and hired him. A few days later, the farmer and his wife were awakened in the night by a violent storm. They quickly began to check things out to see if all was secure. Oh, all the men of the house, before you go to sleep, what do you do? You secure the home, right? Can you imagine telling your four-year-old son, can you do it for Papa? They quickly began to che check things to see if all was secure. They found that the shutters of the farmhouse has been securely fastened. A good supply of logs had been set next to the fireplace. The young man slept soundly. The farmer and his wife then inspected their property. They found that the farm tools had been placed in the storage shed safe from the elements. The barn was properly locked. Even the animals were calm. All was well. The farmer then understood the meaning of the young man's words, I can sleep when the wind blows because the farmhand did his work loyally and faithfully when the skies were cleared. He was prepared for the storm when it broke. So when the wind blew, he was not afraid. He could sleep in peace. Those people who are prepared, they sleep in peace, man. And by the way, Newsflash, your success is not measure of all the things that you accumulated here in Melbourne. Can that be a newsflash? Can that be a newsflash? That's not. That's not. If you think it is, you're kidding yourself. It's not. It is those words, love the Lord with your heart, your mind, and your strength. Intimately. Intimately. Are you there? Are you here still? Are you still here, church? The boy was just faithfully doing his work, isn't it? I mean, can you imagine? We get to see this all the time. Faithfulness. You only got one shot here in serving God. Man, give your best shot. Do it with excellence. Do it with gusto, right? I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy peasy. I mean, can you, can you say, can you imagine if it's easy peasy? I mean, the Bible will say, oh, it's a wide road. <laughs> Are you there? Wide road. Come on in. The Bible says, what? Help me. It's a narrow road. Because God is sifting. That's why he says to the right, the sheep, they hear my voice. God, are you still there? Where? Where to go? Right? Okay, I'll go, I'll go right. Oh, God, it's difficult on the right. Anak, stay on the right. Stay on the right. The sheep hears my voice. The goat on the left. The Bible says it's foolish. The third mark of faithfulness is, say to the one next to you, my neighbor, <laughs> commitment. <laughs> commitment. Big word, huh? Are you there? Huh? Sister Anne, commitment. Yeah. <laughs> commitment, man. Commitment. Ooh, we need to encourage one another. I love my wife. 
Luke chapter 9, verse 62, he said, No one puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, He who does not take his cross and follow after me, capital M, not worthy of me. That's why he says, what? Take up the cross. Deny yourself. And then follow me. Those people who are committed, there's a lot of denying involves. Sometimes you're right, but because you want to follow God, there are times God has to humble you because God has to show you the bigger picture. And then you don't need to shove your rights all the time. From time to time, God humbles us. Paul did not have an easy life as a Christian. Right? Apostle Paul suffered as a Christian. He's a wonderful example of commitment. Five times he was wh whipped. Three times he was beaten with rods. Remember that? Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Uh, the earthquake at Philippi jail with Silas. Remember that story that sometimes from time to time I tell you. Can you imagine Silas was talking to him in the jail and says, Oh man, Paul. I thought ministry is just sweet, good, good. And there, look at us now. We are in prison because of the gospel. And we know for a fact what they did there in that prison. They did church and all the people were released, including them. And not only them, hallelujah, even the prison guard received God. Wow, hallelujah. Paul is a wonderful example Three times he was shipwrecked. He spent night and day in the sea. He faced dangers many times. More than many of us will ever face. Because commitment we make makes us. How many of you believe that with all your heart? The commitment that you make to the Lord makes you. Right? Possibly makapagbigay tayo ng wala tayo. Are you there? Huh? To the missionary in the Middle East? You can't. You can't. Language that we use at church sometimes, you, you, do the, you talk the talk and you do the walk. You can't. And that base on faithfulness and commitment. Are you still here, church? God does not require a lot of things from you. You're not required to be brilliant. Look at me. You're not required to be articulate. You're not required to be literate. You're not required to be handsome, poggy, or beautiful. You're not required to be eloquent. Nothing wrong with studying. Nothing wrong in moving towards your skin, your own skin, but you are required you and I, to be faithful. To be faithful. Can I say that again? To be faithful. To be faithful. To be faithful. Not just because it's good all the time. Most of us are tested when the, the times of our life is hard to remain faithful. Would that be a good reminder today? The marks of a faithful Christian, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will bring an account. You and I, we are accountable people. Accountable. Isn't it? Hallelujah. A reminder of Paul when he says, I paraphrase this. He was talking to the church and he's going, oh man, he's talking something like this. I wish they can see that my right knee and my left knee are banging together because I'm so nervous. But you know what he was talking about? He wasn't nervous about speaking to the crowd. He was nervous about, he was so afraid about him speaking about the word of God and himself will be an example of that word. Example of that word. You will leave this room today, you and I, and please print this in your heart, not because you're a dad. You are an example of Christ. You are an example of Christ. Are you here, church? You are an example of Christ. You are accountable and you need to prepare. Sir, to the one next to you. Huh? Like the Boy Scout and the Girl Scout. Come on, my neighbor. Always be prepared. 
Always be prepared. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, you will see a crowd and they will start talking rubbish and then you're there in the mix of it because you just want to talk to them and they're your group. God is saying to you, man, come on. You don't need trash. Be prepared. Prepare. Prepare. Are you here, church? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you need to be committed. You and I. Hallelujah. Say to the one next to you, stay committed. Stay committed. Stay committed. God sees everything that you do for Him. Hallelujah. God sees all the things that you bring into your home, to your marriage, to your family. Stay committed. I know it's hard. You can't perfect it. No way. I can't do it. But one thing I need to do, I need to be faithful. I need to be faithful. I can't stop. I can't quit. Say to the one next to you, don't ever quit. Don't ever quit in God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is able to do it. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. He says, come to me, God says, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, for my yoke, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. God, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll give you three seconds, five seconds, right now, from your heart. Say thank you to the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Can you imagine all those hard days that you and I faced and He was there? He was there on the beat because He says, my burden is light. I can do it. I just need to trust you, God. Hallelujah. Challenge to everybody. How many of you are trusting the Lord? How many of you are trusting the Lord? Hallelujah. Let's all arise. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Can we give a hand clap to the Lord? Yes, God. Come on. Hand clap to the Lord. God is good. God is good. God is good. Praise the Lord. Worship with us. the Lord and most worthy of praise. Let us see. Worship with us. The joy of the whole world. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord in whom is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He takes us. He takes us again. Worship him. Worship him. Adore him. Let us bow down. Hallelujah.
worship Him, worship Him, church. song to him for you alone for you
angels in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Lord, so many times we hear this reminder and we will not stop hearing it. At the end of the day, I ask, oh God, that we remain faithful. Lord, teach us to be faithful no matter what happens. Tinuruan mo kami, Panginoon. You have taught us that you have groomed us and you're grooming us. Hallelujah. Sometimes, oh God, in the place of our challenges. And it's fine, Lord. I ask in your name, in behalf of your people, including myself, oh God, whatever happens, Lord, whatever happens, Lord, teach us to be faithful. Teach us to look unto you, the author and the finisher of our walk. Or look unto you, God. I know, I know, God. It's living in this time. It's so distracting, left and right. But Lord, give us those eyes, hallelujah, that we're just looking unto you, looking unto you. And remind us those three words, oh God, today and for the remaining days of our life, of our walk with you, oh God, that we are accountable people. Yes, God, hallelujah. Teach us to prepare. Teach us to prepare. You even showed us, oh God, in your word and even in example, oh God, how you showed us the ants, oh God. Hallelujah. They prepare their food in the rainy days, oh God. So, hallelujah. Even on good days, they prepare their food, oh God. So when it rains, oh God, they have lots of food. Lord, sometimes we see that happening in front of us. And Lord, thank you for teaching us. Thank you for teaching us preparation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I ask, oh God, raise your hands to the Lord. I ask, oh God, for this house that we remain committed. Committed po kami, Panginoon. Not just in words. Not just because it's a good day. Most of all, most of all, Panginoon, on bad days, bad moments, bad days, Lord. You watch us on those days. You're looking unto us on those days. And I ask even for us, including me, oh God, that we set an example to this generation, to the next generation to come. Hallelujah, that we are accountable people. We are people that knows preparation. We are people, hallelujah, who are committed to you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for your children who are here. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, every moment of our breathing life, remind us that we are your servant. Hallelujah. And we are your steward. To you all the glory. Hallelujah. Bless your children. Bless your children. Bless your children. Bless your people. Come on. Receive that from the Lord. Open your mouth and say, God, I receive it. Bless your children. Bless your children with attitude that they will never compromise. Hallelujah. Bless your children that they will never copy the behavior of this world. Bless your children. Hallelujah. To remind them every sleeping moment in their lives as they dream, you remind them that they're the light. They're the salt. Yeah, they make a difference. Yes, to you all the glory. Yes, yes. We declare that we make a difference. We are the taste flavor of this earth. We are the color agent of this earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. To you all the glory. To you all the praise. And God's children say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Sunday service. Uh,
Shall we pray? Lord, thank you, Lord. As we end, O oh Lord, uh, Sunday service, O oh Lord. Lord, we claim the victory, O oh Lord, today, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the life of Pastor Bong, Pastor Ann, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word today, O oh Lord. You remind us, O oh Lord, to how to be a Lord, huh? committed and faithful servant of yours, O oh Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless, O oh Lord, Pastor Bong and Pastor Ann, O oh Lord. Show them, O oh Lord, what's the true, Lord, meaning of, Lord, in serving you, Lord. Lord, in serving you, Lord, is our strength, O oh Lord. The joy of, uh, hallelujah, Lord, in serving you, O oh Lord. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Bless, O oh Lord, each servant of yours, O oh Lord, and each ministry, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, empower them, O oh Lord. Give them, Lord, hallelujah, vision, O oh Lord, and and the strength, O oh Lord, and the joy, O oh Lord, in serving you, O oh Lord. Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. For your faithfulness, O oh Lord. For your mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, the word we hear, O oh Lord. Let there be, O oh Lord, a tool, O oh Lord, for each and every one, O oh Lord. We know, O oh Lord, that enemy, O oh Lord, come, O oh Lord, to hallelujah, kill and um, destroy each and every one, O Lord, the family, the lives, the business, O Lord. Lord, Lord, we pray, O Lord, that the word we hear, O Lord, we will use, O Lord, in, in hallelujah, Lord, in, in walks, O Lord, in going to hallelujah, glory to glory, O Lord, in our Christian life, O Lord. Lord, hallelujah, Lord, and we claim, O Lord, the victory, O Lord, today, O Lord. And Lord, I pray, O Lord, Lord, bless J.I.L. Melbourne, O oh Lord, especially, O oh Lord, in Project Solomon, O oh Lord. We claim, O oh Lord, that it will happen, O oh Lord. It will happen, O oh Lord. Lord, use J.I.L. Melbourne, O oh Lord, each hallelujah servant of yours, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, to expand your territory, O oh Lord. I know, Lord, hallelujah is hard, O oh Lord, but Lord, nothing is impossible, O oh Lord. To you, hallelujah, to your hands, O oh Lord, to touch, O oh Lord, each and every one, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Lord, I know, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, from north to east and south to west, O oh Lord, that they will know, Lord, that there is only one God that we are serving, O oh Lord. It is you alone, O oh Lord, hallelujah, Lord. And Lord, we claim today the victory, O oh Lord, to you all, the, the glory, the adoration, O oh Lord, and praises, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless everyone. See God bless everyone. Day. Have a